there. My name is Alice and welcome to the Palletful Packs YouTube channel. I have the February 2020 premiere pack right here in front of me. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. So this February box has some nice, fun, festive red paper squigglies this time. Love that. The theme this month is Marabou Art Crayons. So there are quite a few crayons in here. So these are watercolor crayons that are wax based and like a soft pastel and they're in a retractable holder with a grip and a protective cap so you can travel with them super super easily. They're super versatile so you can use them for a variety of different fine arts and mixed media work and they work well on like raw or primed surfaces so you can use them on paper, fabric, canvas, that kind of stuff. You can blend them, you can use water with them and you can do like pretty much everything with them. I have used some art crayons in the past and they are a really, really versatile mixed media substance. So I am really, really excited to use these. This pack has yellows, greens, blues, and this pack has more pinks, reds, and oranges. The next thing that I see is a little plastic water cup, perfect for holding your water so you can use water with these fun art crayons. And then we have a black and a white art crayon, which is definitely very helpful. There is a brush in this pack. This is a number six Princeton Select round brush. The last thing in here is the surface. And this is gonna be the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor Paper in the cold press. It's the 500 series, which is their premium series. And you're gonna get 10 sheets, eight by 10 inches. Strathmore is great paper. It's 100% cotton, archival, acid-free, all of that great stuff. But these are pre-cut into standard size sheets that are perfect for ready-made frames or mats. All right, so this is everything that you're going to get in the February 2020 palette packs. So let's make some art with them. The first thing that I'm gonna do, like in all of my videos, is make some swatches of the supplies. This is gonna give me an idea of what the colors look like, as well as how they perform on the specific surface. Gives me the opportunity to play around with different techniques before I use them on an actual painting, which I definitely find super helpful, so I highly recommend that whenever you get a new art supply, you spend a little bit of time just playing around with different techniques and seeing how it performs before you jump into a painting. So I swatched them on the Strathmore paper and then the first thing that I did was I went and added in some water because I wanted to see what these looked like when you added water, whether they were like watercolor pencils where they're going to blend out very smoothly or if they're going to retain some of the texture, just kind of figuring out what they're going to look like. Then I started working on maybe some little types of blending. So I went in and I used the crayons pretty heavily so that they were more of an oil pastel and I used that as kind of a way to blend. And then I went in and added some water because I wanted to see how that would work with a heavier amount of crayon. And then I went in and did some techniques with some misting, both misting on the dry crayon and then adding the crayon to wet paper. Then I jumped into the actual piece. So the first thing I wanted to do was create a background and then I had decided that I wanted to draw on top of the background. So I started by misting the paper, getting it nice and wet and starting to build up some of these pink colors. I was really digging the pink colors in the set and since it is February and I was actually making this piece like on Valentine's Day was when I was filming this. So yeah, I just thought that it was very appropriate for February. So I spent some time building that up, working on blending some things out. I did use a larger brush that I had lying around just for this background to make the lines like nice and smooth and make sure everything was blended out into a nice gradient. There is quite a bit of texture with these, but I really ended up enjoying it. So I got that background done and then I went in with pencil and just an ink pen that I had lying around to create that drawing. I decided to do a little deer with some candy conversation hearts hanging off of its antlers. I just really like deer and I was feeling, like I said, the Valentine's Day thing. 
So once I had that done, I really started building up the crayons and playing with some other different techniques. So this technique that I'm using right now, I used a wet brush and then I rubbed that on the end of the crayon and I was able to get a nice, light, smooth wash of the color. So I went ahead and used this darker raspberry color and this nice like kind of lighter washed down version of it to go ahead and darken the background around the deer. Then I went in with the shading. Because the deer is furry, I wanted to, it to be a little bit more of a textured look, and I wanted to go with some fun colors, not necessarily more realistic colors, so I decided to use the yellows, oranges, and reds because I thought they would go really nicely with the background. The technique that I used for this is I used the crayon, specifically the edges of the crayon so I could get some nice fine detailed lines to go in and start using basically hatch marks and building up some of those colors that I wanted. Then I added in quite a bit of water and kind of allowed it to blend itself a little bit to create sort of this loose watercolor, color melting effect. And I was really, really stoked about how it turned out. I worked on this in layers, so I would dry certain layers in between with just a hair dryer and then build up again on top of that. You can totally build with these crayons. They just keep building on top of each other. So they're really, really great for that because it does get pretty waxy when you start building it. If you're gonna use a pen on the top, I do recommend having like a paper towel or something next to you that you can periodically wipe the pen tip off because it does get a little bit of that waxy buildup just because these are like wax crayons. <laughs> I'm using the same technique to create these pastel colors for the conversation hearts, and I used the same technique that I used on the deer fur for the leaves of the little roses that I have in the corner. I found that if you wanted really strong colors, it was best to apply the crayon directly to the paper, but if you wanted a more pastel color, you could work with just wetting the crayon. I did try a couple other things as well, including cutting off parts of the crayon and mixing it with water. And I found that it was a little bit more effective just to wet the crayon. I got a little bit more consistent color and it was just easier overall. So that's kind of what I would recommend if you're wanting to do a light wash of color. Something that I really enjoyed about these was the fact that they were more opaque so I could continue to build stuff up. That meant that I could go in and add white highlights at the end, which enabled me to be more detailed with specifically where these highlights were going to go instead of trying to preserve all of these small spaces of white when I was going in with the crayon, since they are a little bit larger, it really, really helped to be able to add the white in at the end. I was even able to add water to the white and it didn't get too see-through or anything like that. It still stayed nice and bright and white and I was able to keep those highlights. The black itself is super, super dark, which is really, really amazing. You can really use it to add some nice contrast to your piece. And I used it for the nose and for the eyes, but then I was again able to go in and add some nice white highlight and then blend that out into a light gray. So you can really layer different colors on top of each other and then blend those out for more unique colors, which I found so fun. I really, really enjoyed working with these crayons. I found them have a, like a little bit of a learning curve when you first started, but once you really get into them, you can create some really, really cool effects. And I think the overall finish of the piece is really nice as well. Once I was done with those crayons, I just went back over the lines with a black pen that I had lying around just to make them stand out a little bit more. Like I said, I would just wipe your tip of your pen periodically on some paper towel, which is what I did. And that's pretty much how I finished the piece. I hope that you liked this video and I hope that you found it helpful and informative and it gave you some ideas as to how to use your Marabou art crayons. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in getting your own palette premiere pack, there will be a link in the description box below so you can check that out. And I can't wait to see what everyone creates with their crayons. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next month. Bye.